Here comes one. Follow on it. Follow on it. Take it. Take it. Pause. Pause. Pause it. In a dark, damp valley, in the middle of May, an overweight gentleman with a grey beard decided to do a little bit of trout fishing. Keep on watching to see how the story unfolds. Hey, you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. I'm starting off with a striped tiger nymph in trout row colour. Last time I fished this creek I had an absolute ripper of a session but then it poured rain and I got washed out and I haven't been back since. Right, I am in. That water is like ice. I'll be trying my best not to get water in my gumboots but I reckon I probably will end up it will end up happening. I think there's a swirl. Oh, something followed that. That's a sart. I didn't hit it though. I got him. Ah, oh, you hit it that time and I've done him. The signs are good. Now my friend Ozzy from Ozzy Fishing and Outdoors on YouTube, who I fished with recently, he says that I suffer from gumboot anxiety. I get a bit anxious when the water's getting near the top. <laughs> I think I'm going to be suffering from a fair bit of that today. Well, I think it's pretty safe to say the creek hasn't been fished recently because if it had, there would almost definitely be footprints on that sand. I'm actually just a little bit upstream of where I got out that day when it was raining. I pretty much got in at the spot that I got out last time. Saw one fish when I got in and haven't seen one since. Sure, there's got to be one in here. It's been so quiet. Oh, got him! Yes, first one! Finally! Tell you what folks, it's not like the fishing last time I was here when I was catching them one after the other. I've spent more time pruning blackberries than I have casting lures. And I've only seen one other fish and that was the very first hole I fished. This is only the second fish I've seen. I'll get a quick photo and then I'll put it back. Alright lovely little brown trout, see you later mate. It's been an uphill battle I've got to tell you. To get the first fish, gotta be one in there, surely. Couldn't have made a better cast. Oh, he followed it. Oh, he chased it out. Time to get into gardening mode again, I think. I'll make my way up through there and around. This is a beautiful big hole. This one, I've caught fish here before. I'll start off fishing it from well back, so if I catch a fish at the back or something, there's one on it. There was one there. I don't speak the entire pool. Oh, you hit it, you hit it. Grab it, grab it, grab it. Grab it. Oh, fussy, fussy. I've taken that soft plastic off and I've gone to a minnow because I reckon these trout are more aggressive than hungry at the moment. I reckon the strikes are more of a strike out of aggression than out of hunger. So I'm going to put something big on it, it's bigger than normal, it's a 70mm pontoon 21 tantalizer in the hope that it might get in the fish's face and the fish will attack it to get it away. Get your hands off my girl, keep your hands off my girl. Always takes a bit of getting used to, you got him! Going from a small lure to a larger lure, look at that, it worked straight away and it's a nice fish too. Come on mate, they have the plan worked instantly, as soon as I took the plastic off and put the minnow on, hooked a fish. Brown trout, see you later mate. Well that paid off, awesome, I only had the lure on for about 10 metres. <laughs> well switching from the plastic to the minnow was delivered instant results, another one coming down. Ooh. He was a bit more cunning, that one. He only had a quick look and then turned around. What if I twitch it a bit? It didn't come back out. Here comes one. Follow on it. Follow on it. Take it. Take it. Pause. Pause. Pause it. Nah. <laughs> They're still fussy. Can't really see much there. Look at that. Looking straight into the sun. As we're staring at the sun, whoa, I might get a photo of that.
Look at that very pretty waterfall up there. I've snuck up behind this tussock in front of me so that I can hide. And I'm just going to cast into the back of the pool. There's a wave got him. Little fella. Oh shit. Not again. Oh, that was close. Wow. Almost got the hook stuck in my finger again. That was close. Lovely little trout. Lip hooked. Oh, see you later, mate. Gee, that was close. The hook went in there. You can see a bit of blood. I didn't even have my right hand on it. I only had one hand on the fish. It shows how easy it can happen. Actually, if I had pliers with me now, I'd crimp these barbs, but I haven't got any pliers with me. One, he's hit it. Oh, he hit it twice. I thought he grabbed that in the second time round. I've never actually been this far up this creek. I normally turn around down there. I have fished it up further, where it's, where it's even more overgrown than this, in a spot that I've nicknamed the Creek from Hell. That's this creek, but it's up there a bit more. I've never been in this section here. Beautiful cast. Bang! No fish there. No way. I won't have it. This guy's one. Got him. Told you there was going to be a fish there. Ha ha ha. Alright, wet me hand. Not much time for you to fight there, mate, was there? Just hooked you and hoisted you. Lovely photo with a nice dark background. Well folks, that fish was hooked very, very deep. I had to kill the fish, so I've kept that one and I'll put that in my smoker. And even after I'd killed it, I still had trouble getting the hooks out. Wow. There'll be a fish in there, but can I get it out? Here it comes, he's hitting, he's under it, he's looking at it. He's gonna have to hit it on the surface. He nearly did, you know. He was a nice fish too. Now that was the story of the overweight gentleman with the beard who went trout fishing. At this point he turned around because he'd found an escape route back up to the road where he could walk back to his car. So he finished there and he said to say thank you all very much for watching.